Don't y'all just love that pretty tree? This is actually about um, a parable tonight. And um, I think it's very fitting because um, this, a lot of people don't preach about this parable because sometimes it can be difficult to understand. And, and, there's, and there's certain things in this message tonight and, and the teaching tonight that should open our eyes. I have a, several, several scripture as probably they've already seen back there already. They just love that. But I've got a lot of scripture that I want to, to share with you because it's important that you understand the Word of God. So as I begin tonight, I want to thank each and every one, not only for being here at Highest Praise Tabernacle tonight, but also thank those that's listening and viewing us live tonight. Thank you for tuning in. And if you're looking for a church home and you believe in the Bible, teaching, living, obeying the Word of God for everyday life, we'd like for you to come join us at Highest Praise Tabernacle. Amen. Amen. This is a parable tonight um, that warns of the false teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, by the way. And this is going to be in Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 through 12. Now, as I say this, both groups were religious, but their hearts were far from God. Now, since they were not spiritually minded, they didn't understand the spiritual teaching that Christ was trying to tell them. So as we go into the book of Matthew chapter 16. Beginning with verse 6. Follow along with me as we see Jesus. As he explains. Then Jesus said unto them. Take heed and beware of the leaven. Of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reason among themselves saying. It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that you do not understand that I spake it not of you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not, them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Nobody ever talks about this scripture, this parable. But see, it's, it's not that complicated. I bet you were probably thinking, you know, really, what did he just say? What in the world? He's talking about bread, leaven. This it doesn't make good sense. But see, Jesus always had a reason for what he taught. He had a reason for teaching these parables. And this parable was simple, as I told you earlier. It's about warning. And in fact, the first part of this in verse 6 is, step 1 is warning. There's a warning in verse 6 because in verse 6 he said, Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven. Okay, first of all, he warns them. Watch out. See, when Jesus warned them, he, he said, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The leaven or yeast here, church, refers to the teachings of these two sects. Okay? Let me tell you, that. this is the teachings that these, these two sects, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus said, beware of them. See, let's look at the religious uh, Pharisees, first of all. They were very self-righteous. Anybody know anybody that's self-righteous? It's why is self in it? Because that's how they got their righteousness through themselves. See, and Jesus was warning of these religious Pharisees. Now, I want to share another scripture with you that's going to explain a little bit more. Because, in fact, the other night we had a study on this particular one scripture altogether. But they were very self-righteous. Remember the uh, Pharisees in Luke 18? Remember I shared with you um, Luke 18, 10 through 12? You remember the story? Well, let's share it with you so that we can catch up on this warning as, as we look at the Pharisees tonight. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now, this is the Pharisees. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with, him, with himself. 
God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. In verse 12, he says, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes to all that I possess. Now, I shared that with you last week, I believe it was. But see, this was the Pharisees that Jesus was warning about. These religious Pharisees. They fasted, they prayed, they paid tithes. But they did not yield to God. Now, God was warning about not following their teaching. Because that's not the way you do it. That's not God's way. Well, let's, on this warning note that we spoke of in verse 6, where he warned, he only not only warned about the Pharisees, he also said, also rejecting the Sadducees. Now, um, the Sadducees is a little bit different, but they still had an issue. They didn't believe in the resurrection. Did y'all know that the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection? And Jesus warned them about following their teachings. In fact, in, and they don't not only believe in the resurrection, they also didn't believe in angels or spirits. Did you know that the, the Sadducees didn't believe in all this? Well, I'm going to prove it to you tonight. First of all, so that we can understand why this parable was so important to, the, to Jesus to teach to his disciples. In Mark 12, 18, listen to this. Then come unto him the Sadducees. Look at the next words. Which say there is no what? Resurrection. And they ask him saying. All right. Now let's go on. This just. That's one shows you that Sadducees don't believe in a resurrection. Look at um, Luke 20. Am I right? Yeah. Luke 20, 27. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees. There they are again. Which deny that there is a what? Any resurrection. And they asked him. So now, let's move to Acts 23.8. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angels nor spirit. Did you know that? But the Pharisees confessed both. Okay, see now the Pharisees was over the top with religion. But the Sadducees didn't believe nothing. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in spirits. Did I just make that up? It's, there's the writing on the wall. As Daniel would put it, there it is right there. Both groups had a form of godliness, but denied the power thereof. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power the power that was so important tonight. In fact, um, there's another scripture that I want to, to touch on this warning part 2 Timothy 3 5 having a form of what godliness but denying the power thereof just like we just said from such turn away what's the Lord saying turn away from those kind of people don't get involved with them but God wants us to have changed lives church we need to realize when he's talking about this parable he is saying look let me tell you something y'all need to get off a lot of this religious stuff you're doing because the Pharisees they claim to be totally religious in fact they when they prayed they thought they were better than anybody else right we have, uh, that's what bothers me truly when we have so many denominations this day and time. Everybody thinks theirs is perfect. It's, thank God they're not. Because I'd hate to know only one denomination is going to make it to heaven and the rest of us ain't. But see, they, that's the problem. God says, God's telling, don't steer to that. Listen, if you go into a church and they don't give you the Word of God, but they give you their own watered-down version, leave. If somebody's trying to tell you how to live your life and it didn't come from here, don't go. I'm telling you, church, that's one of the biggest problems the Pharisees had. They were self-righteous. In fact, then we read earlier, when, when somebody come up beside them to pray, that publican, he didn't even want to even get near him because he wasn't good enough to even pray with him. You ever seen people that have been saved so long that they don't think that they think they're better than everybody else? That's why lost people rather stay lost. I mean, why should I go in there? There's enough hypocrites inside the church. Don't need another one. 
See, that's the problem. See, God, Jesus warned them in this parable. He said, warned you about false teachings. What's a false teaching, church? A false teaching is anything that don't line up with the Word of God. Don't take the Word of God and, and, and twist it and turn it around to fit you. Take it as it is, what it means, the fact of it is, and, and apply it. And see, that, that's like, you know, we try to, if we're messing up, we say, well, the Bible says that, you know, I can do this and it's not a sin or, or um, you know, none of us is perfect. So that gives us a free license to sin. No. Mm -mm, you're taking God's word out of context. And he said, also be, these rejecting Sadducees. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of churches right now that claim to be Christians that don't believe in the resurrection. There's some out there right now that don't believe you're supposed to have the Holy Spirit. Well, I can go ahead and tell you, you know, there's a lot of denominations that do not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how can you not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? I mean, I think about this. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus said, if you only believe in Jesus and don't believe in the Holy Spirit, I hope you left when Jesus left. Because he said, I'm leaving. He says, I've got, I'm going to my Father. He said, but I'm going to leave somebody with you. Who do you leave with you? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. So look, if you don't believe in him, you got a problem. You're walking around here broke, busted, disgusted, sad, lonely, depressed, and you got a reason to be because you sure ain't got no help. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've got the Holy Spirit, and you know, he's inside. And, and how can we, as a Christian, Christians, reject resurrection, the angels, or spirits? Jesus says, my angels, I will have charge over thee, right? So if the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection, the angels or spirits, they don't believe in the Word of God. You can't believe in some of it and not all of it. If you do, then you got a problem. Let's look at another reason why this parable is so important. Now, Jesus already warned them about what verse 6 said, but also there was something in, in part 2 of this is called worry. Now listen, the disciples were concerned about their natural food, not understanding the spiritual truth. See, in verse 7, Jesus wasn't speaking about bread, but of spiritual truth. Now see, when he said it in verse 7, it kind of messed them, and they reasoned among themselves, what were they doing? Hmm. Were we supposed to eat that bread? Hmm. I wonder what we were supposed to eat. Saying, is it because we have taken no bread? We haven't eaten yet. Oh, that's what he's talking about. Jesus is like, really? Now, he probably didn't say that. But, the, you know, probably something I would say. But see, the, the, the power of truth. But see, he was talking about the spiritual truth. See, the spiritual truth is something the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't have. See, I want you to note the power of truth in John 8.32. Everybody knows John 8.32, right? And ye shall know the... And the truth shall... Amen. So what part of... That's what Jesus is trying to get them off of. They were thinking with the flesh rather than with the spirit. Right? They were focusing on the wrong thing. That's why this parable was so important. Jesus... Who is the truth, by the way? I was about to let the cat out back. Do you know who the truth is? John 14, 6 tells you who is the truth. You shall know the truth. But look what John said in John 14, 6. Jesus said in him, I am the way, the and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, so he's letting them know, look. You worried about the wrong things. You haven't got your eyes focused. So I need to break this down to you. You're worried about the bread. And I'm trying to tell you that it's about spiritual truth. So he's letting them know that he is the truth. That he, there's power in the truth. Church, is there power in the truth? There certainly is. Because let me tell you something. If you tell the truth, you only got to tell it one time. If you lie, take it from a pro that could write all the books on it. If you lie, you're going to have to lie and lie and lie and lie. And trust me, if parents is half slick as mine, they just wait for you to forget. And then they ask you again, what did you do? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't what you said last time I asked you. Go to your room. I'll be in in a minute. That was always a bad sign. You ain't kidding. Because that meant leather come off. And that weren't pretty. But see, that's why the truth is, is sets you free. When you tell the truth, what does it do? It makes you feel good, don't it? Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth, right? My wife, and then she just walked through. My wife, she, she asked me a question. Hey, hon. She asks me a question. She says, does this look good on me? Look. <laughs> Absolutely. I already know there's no winning to this question. So I'm going to just, yes, it looks great. Right? Do I look big in this? Oh, no. The truth shall set you free. Truth is, you look great. Steer away from all them other things that you can't get out of. But the truth, the truth will set you free. So that's Jesus wanted them to know that the truth is very important. Now look what the concern was also. They were worried. They were confused in verse 7. But then there was some concern that, that took place in verse 8. He says, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Okay. Bought no bread, bought no bread. Let's see, let me get it. Brought no bread. Okay, so he's telling, that he's, he, he says, uh, he rebuked them. Oh, ye of little faith. He says, now here you are thinking about this bread thing. He said, so what does Jesus do? He says, okay, I proceed. Because see, Jesus is God. God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit. So what did Jesus do when he perceived? He knew what they were thinking. Isn't that scary? They didn't have to say nothing. He said, I know what you're thinking right now. Y'all are thinking about this bread thing. Let me break this down to you real good. See, he says, oh, ye of little faith. He see, then Jesus reminds them of two times he had fed the multitude. Why? Because they were concerned about the bread. Well, there's enough bread. So what did Jesus do? He said, no, uh-uh. Listen, y'all remember what happened in, in um, Matthew 14, 21. Here's what Jesus basically said to him in Matthew 14, 20. He said, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And then also he said also too, he said, what about these other 4,000 in Matthew 15, 38? He, 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 he went back and told them the word of God. He said, and they that did eat were 4,000 men beside women and children. Most people think, stick on that 5,000 and 4,000. That's not the Bible. That was just a man. So guess what? There was 4,000 men. And I think 4,000 women and children. That was a lot of people. But Jesus was letting them know. He said, see, he's letting them know. He said, no, y'all don't get the point. I'm teaching you this parable to get your mind off of the flesh and get you in the spirit. So whenever he perceived that they were th focusing on the wrong thing, then Jesus steered them in the right direction. See, we all know that Jesus will meet all our needs, right? Do you believe it? Well, it's probably easy to believe when you've got a job. But whenever you lose your job, then that's not when things kind of can turn on you, right? It, it makes you question Hey, and look, if you're not questioning whenever you're going through something, you're not human. But see, here's where the purpose is, to trust God. Because Jesus, he tells us in the Bible, look, this, is, this scripture is for everyone tonight. Philippians 4.19. What does that say? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But who's God? Okay, all right, so... Is he your God? Can God lie? Is he the truth? What did he just say then? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Wonder how much God owns. North Carolina? South Carolina? United States? No, he created the heavens and the earth. God has no endless end to his resources. Everything. He says, but I will. See, that's the truth. That he's, see, 
he, Jesus is letting know, don't get caught up on what bread you haven't brought or what you haven't brought. I supply all your needs. Get off of that mess. Don't walk around focusing on your flesh and what your needs are. Let's get you back where you spiritually need to be. So we also know that he supplies all our needs. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, y'all know this and right, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not more, much more, clothe you, O ye of little faith? See, what is he letting them know? He say, Jesus is saying, look, I supply all your needs. I do it all. But you've got to, don't worry. Just like the disciples, they started worrying and were concerned about the natural food. Jesus is letting them know in this parable, don't you worry about that natural stuff. He said, I can take care of that. I want to teach you spiritual and, and the third part of this um, parable that was so important was the wrong interpretation. Now, when I say the wrong interpretation, this is where most, a lot of people don't understand it. In fact, in, in 11 and 12 of Matthew 16, I want to share this with you. He said, how is it that you do not understand? Now, here's, here's Jesus telling them that I spake it not to you concerning what? Bread. That ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then verse 12 says, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So all of a sudden, now here's, here we go. Why is it that you do not see that, that, that I was not talking to you about bread? The question was, I was talking to you about Keeping away from the yeast of the proud religious law keepers and the religious groups of people who believe no one will be raised from the dead. He's letting them know, do not be misled from that. You know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and there's probably a lot of people that um, can tell you a certain thing. When we did our baptism, and I might get some remarks on this good. We, we're, we're public. We got an email. You can send them. But a lot of people think that children shouldn't be baptized. In fact, I, was, I remember a time that someone um, come to me, um, probably was in their 30s, and they turned, literally steered away from God because at the age of 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, their, their doctrine or their, um, their whatever... Told them that they couldn't baptize them until they were adults. That's not the Bible. Okay? And this woman went her adult life until I, I met her. Um, and, and she asked me about it. I said, I said, look, that was wrong. If you know Jesus and you love Jesus, that means that you want the world to know you love Jesus. And that um, you, sh you have the right to be baptized. And, um, but my point in saying this to you is this. Is um, a lot of people this day and time. They're taking um, the wrong interpretation of God's word. And uh, they misunderstand it. Um, I have to go on record on saying this. The reason why multimedia... Facebook, Twitter, all of them, whoever. The reason why things is so crazy out there now, people are actually committing a crime on camera so that they can get their face up on, on media. But the, 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 the thing about it of it is, is we must understand is, is this, is um, when we're talking about the wrong interpretation of, of, of God's word, um, we're doing it and don't even realize it as Christians when we sit back judging other people of their sins, the Bible says, be careful. Because if you start judging other people, I'll judge you. And see, that's what, that's what a lot of people don't say. Well, I don't know why this has happened to me. Well, you better check what you're doing. See, um, when, and, and if you know media, media get, gets off on bad stuff. I'm serious. You do something good on media, it doesn't last. But let some nutball 
get out there and do something totally stupid and and it goes viral and and and, and that proves to you right there my point is this is that we've got the wrong concept we're supposed to be listen church and if and if this is affecting anybody out there i i've blocked people from my websites and my and my ministries and and, and and our media because listen i'm not going to listen to you i share we share the gospel we do it with love and compassion i'm not here to judge or condemn and neither should you if you want to get on media, do, do Jesus, you should do it with love and compassion. You should share it. You know what? If you've got a friend that's gone out there and got messed up, guess what? If he's any kind of friend or she's any kind of friend, the only way you're going to lead them back to Jesus is do it with love and compassion. Don't, don't beat them to death with the Bible. Say you're going to burn in hell for what you're doing. Let's get real. The bottom line of it is, is this world has totally misinterpreted what God, Jesus said. Jesus said, the last commandment I leave with you is to love thy brother as you love yourself. And let me tell you, that pretty much puts down everything else that you've got in your mind. Well, pastor, I know that what they did was terrible. Listen, folks, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can walk around with a halo over your head. You ain't going to heaven. You can buy 12 churches. You ain't going to heaven. You can, you can do everything you want to do, but it isn't going to make you a Christian. It's just like that commercial halos. <laughs> I mean, do y'all ever watch this commercial? I might be sued, Hannah. I better be careful. You ever watch this commercial if they don't get their oranges? They commit a crime. I'm like... Okay, now picture this. A halo represents an angel to them. But they're going to turn into what if they don't get it? There you go. Think about this, guys. That pretty little angel, if they don't get the halo, is going to hang you. Wrong interpretations is how we're messing up the minds of people, right? Now let's look at the message that was in verse 12. The disciples finally understood that Jesus was speaking about the false teachings of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, I know you say, well, that, I hope this is opening up the, you, what you're understanding. But the Bible tells us something that we need to really understand about false teachings. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all Things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now church, this speaks about the teachings according to the divine power hath given to us all. See, what we've got to understand something is we've all been given the teaching. You know what bothers me more than anything else, and I'll say this straight up, is that I cannot for the life of me figure out how people call themselves Christians and still get out there and follow these religious people that do things against the will of God. How can you call yourself Christians when you say, well, I'm going to live an alternate lifestyle? No, let's don't give it a pretty name. It's called sin. We might as well just let all the alcoholics come in here and break out the fifth liquor and drink. We all might as well just come in here and start lying to each other. Because the bottom line of it is, is this. We, we got to understand, you cannot steer away from the truth. Because that's the only thing that's going to get you through what you're going through. And, and if we, yeah, it would be nice. To have a multi-million dollar operation, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. But if they're sitting back there smoking dope, drinking liquor, and cussing, and running around on each other, what good is it? If we got to fill up a church and compromise the word of God, we're not filling up a church. We're filling up a pack house. 
Somebody might know what pack house is. But see, the bottom line of it is, is this. What we're doing is we are not staying true to the teachings. When someone comes up to me and says, I've joined a different religion. It, I have to ask, all them years you were in church, what, what didn't you get? Or better yet, what didn't we teach? See, I know that our children don't, children, let's get real. Children don't like to be taught the Bible. Let's get real. Our children sitting in here, they're like fire ants on a hill, right? They can't stand still for, right? am I right? But let me ask you a question. When your child is faced with Satan, would you rather know that you taught him, whether he liked it or not, the word of God, so that he'd know how to fight them? Wouldn't you like to know that even though they didn't like it and they thought it was boring or whatever, you give them what they need? So that they won't come home one day and, and their whole life is turned upside down because we didn't teach them the Word of God? Let me tell you something. Satan is just not after adults. I'm going to tell you what. He's after teenagers more than he is adults. In fact, if some of you, as you well know, he's after little kids too. And, and, and Jesus is telling us, he's telling the church, we need to get back to the true teachings of the Word of God. We need to steer away from these false teachings. Let me tell you something. A lot of people don't understand this. If someone gets up in the pulpit and doesn't preach the Word of God, and they don't even have to open up the Bible, you don't need to hear them. And if someone gets up there, can I say this? I can, I reckon. If someone gets up there and tells you that, that if you'll sin, how many days is in a year? 365, is that right? If you'll sin $365, I guarantee you a miracle by tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. You know, we got people out there doing that stupid mess. You know why? It's because the church is not staying grounded in the basic principles of teaching the Word of God. And I tell you something else. We better be careful how we pray for somebody. Uh, I, 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 you're going to be healed tomorrow. And then they don't. Yeah. Yeah. False teaching, my friend. Yeah. It's called false prophet. We've got to be careful what the Bible says. You, you don't do nothing without the name of Jesus hooked to it. Okay? In the name of Jesus. By his stripes you are healed. By whose stripes? By Jesus. Everything that we're about is about Jesus. And Jesus was letting the disciples know, look, you better stay away from these Pharisees and these Sadducees. You better stay away from these people just because, oh, come to our church. We got a nice church. We'll serve you snacks and breaks. And, you know, we just, we're going to roll out the red carpet for you. Don't worry about what you're going through or what you're doing. Just come on. Just join in. Let me tell you something. You better run. We better be careful because um, Satan is not going to lay down and die until his time. And, and the Pharisees and Sadducees, the whole point, and Jesus was telling them this, was that, you know, we got to be careful, church. God is interested in every phase of our life. He will meet every physical and spiritual and, 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 and our material needs. But we've got to do it his way. Can I say this? Don't, and, and this is telling probably to me and every other minister listening tonight. If you don't line up with God, don't think God's going to line up with you. Amen. If God's second or fourth on your list, well, that's where you're going to come with him. Amen. Don't expect God to move in your circumstances when you not even got them in your circumstances. See, that's what we, 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 want, we don't realize. Jesus has taught us such simple things. I'll meet your needs because I can't lie. I'm the truth. I can't lie. I said I'm going to meet your needs. I said I'll supply every spiritual need. I'll give you power. I'll give you strength. I'll give you everything that your heart desires. But you're going to have to just do one thing. Do it my way. Isn't that so simple? We all could go home and never have church ever again if we just would listen to that one statement. You want, does anybody not want to be blessed? 
Does anybody need a blessing? We all, guess what? Can God lie? Is God your father? Okay, so if God's your father and Jesus is, is your savior and your friend and you have the comforter, that is yours. Amen. The problem of it is that we've got to get out of our flesh, just like, the, just like the, the disciples. Jesus says you're thinking with the wrong thing. You need to get your mind out of the way and you need to get the spirit involved. You can't, you can't get the spirit involved <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> if you don't know what the spirit is for. So I know that God is trying to tell us, I'll take care of everything. See, Jesus came to give abundant and enjoy, enjoyable life. Do you know, Jesus came to, so we can enjoy this world. Yeah. Everybody's saying, I'll be glad when Jesus comes. I hope it's soon. I can't hardly take no more. Well, that makes John 10.10 10 just look kind of pathetic. John 10, 10, I believe it is. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have and that they might have it more. <coughs> wow. Sorry about that. I just blowed out. What part of life and abundantly don't we get? Enjoyable. Look, this is... If you're not enjoying, you will say, well, yeah, but we ain't supposed to enjoy this world. Who made it? And do it God's way. You can enjoy this world. Just because you go bowling and you got four drunks on the other side don't mean you got to go drink with them. You know? I mean, you know, just because people are acting dumb and stuff don't mean you got to join in with them. Well, I don't want to be around nobody that's got alcohol. Well, you better start going to the grocery stores, the gas stations, and Walmart, and Super, whatever. You better just stay home. And dare not turn on your television. Because there's more beer commercials than there is anything else. So it looks like to me, you're just out of luck. But see, that's not the way God, God wants us to enjoy church. But do it His way. Be a Christian and enjoy what you're doing. To understand God's provisions and blessings, we must live close to Him and follow His Word. Then we will understand His will and way for our lives. That's what Jesus was trying to teach these particular religious groups, these Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus was trying to tell the disciples, He said, look, man, don't you get caught up in that mess? Don't get caught up in, well, we're walking through this cornfield. I wonder if I can eat this. Is it Sunday? I can't eat. See, we're so caught up in rules and regulations. Jesus said, I've come to set you free. When he sets you free, that means when he sets us free, we're not in bondage. When we're not in bondage, that means we get to go out, share the love of Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. See, we've been set free from everything that this world has to bind us down, right? So what? Somebody, you don't have a job. Guess what? God's got a better one planned. Amen. 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 You know what? Don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as an opportunity. Amen. Every time a situation comes up, this is opportunity to please God so that he can bless you. Our problem of it is, is whenever we're presented with a situation, it automatically becomes a problem. Let me say that to you again. Every time we're given a situation, we turn it into a problem yeah. rather than yeah. an opportunity. Yeah. Think about it. Man, what happened to you today? Well, I, I've had a tough day at work, but um, situations is not good. Well, this is an opportunity for me to glorify God. Mm -hmm. How do you glorify God when you lose your job? You didn't lose it. It wasn't yours to start with. Amen. God give it to you. Amen. God will get you another one. Yeah. I know I'm harping on that, but I just want people to understand it. You're not in charge. Amen. See, if you think you're in charge of your life, as I close, let me ask you a question. Let there be no air. Would anybody in this room be breathing if there was no air? You're not in charge. You're not in charge of nothing. Absolutely nothing. Brother, nothing. So if you're not in charge, who is? God, so why not just trust him? He supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory.
See, that's all we got to do. Quit listening to people that have read the Bible 12 times and couldn't tell you 12 words right. Quit listening to people that have gotten 25 or 30 doctrines. You don't have to go. You, God's give it to you. Amen. Childlike faith. Amen. Learn and obey his word. And watch God work. Quit listening to the wrong people. And then you'll see how God will bless us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, Lord, we...